Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Hill. How's it going, everybody? Alien Romulus is finally here, one of the most anticipated films of the year. Amazing trailers, great marketing, but does it live up to the hype? So, Todd, does it? Uh, yes and no. Uh, we'll get into it, but uh, uh, there's some things that worked, and in my opinion, there's some that didn't, but we'll... We'll divulge. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've been, uh, ever since we watched this uh, Thursday night, we're recording this on Saturday after we've seen it, I've been like going back over this film in my head. And let me just start by saying, I think this is a visual masterpiece. No no arguments here, I would agree. It is yep. from set design, from uh, cinematography, general vibes. It goes right there to the top of my list, right behind Blade Runner 2049 in terms of sequels made long past the originals that put you right back into the original world. Definitely, yeah. It goes right back to that point. Right. Um, it is visually, and of the score, everything is just perfect when it comes to everything re regarding visuals and the storytelling of filmmaking. Okay. But... I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> as a whole, as a whole, I don't like it. Okay. The visuals hold up a lot of this for me, but when it comes to the story and the decisions that were made in some points, namely about two to three decisions that I cannot get abide past. by. <laughs> I can't abide it. I can't get past it, okay. Todd. I've tried. I've listened to, listened to some others kind of talk about it, and I've seen it seems to be 50-50, um, but yeah, some of the decisions that are made here baffle me and I just can't, I can't get past them. Okay. And, it, and at the end of the day, it ruined my enjoyment of this film where I find it to be probably the most disappointing film of this year for sure for me. Okay. Cause I was very hyped for this off of the, like I said, the marketing and the trailers looked amazing and it didn't give away too much. And then we get into it and the first punch takes me out of it. And then I'm still reeling from that punch. I'm still a little wobbly on my feet. And then right. we get a second punch. <laughs> and then from there, I'm pretty much, it's like a standing, you know, it's like a standing 10 count. Like okay. I can't, I barely got back up, but they still rung the bell. I got you. It's I over. Got you. It's okay. over for okay. me. So, Todd, let's get into it. What did you think the story was? So, basically, we've got this kind of ragtag band of like young, uh, I think they're in kind of like almost like indentured service servants, hmm. sort of like colonial miners. Uh, they've kind of, you know, they've, they thought they were, one of them thought they were done, but they kind of had to wind up staying down there. But mm -hmm. they've got a way out. They've somehow found out about this derelict space station that's kind of drifted into their upper atmosphere. And they're going to take a ship and fly up to it because they want the cryo chambers that's on that vessel. So they could go to uh, sunnier locations, if you will. But mm. uh, their plans go kind of awry when they hook up with some face huggers and some xenomorphs. This yeah. is Alien Romulus. <laughs> yeah. So um, the story is pretty simple. It's not a like you said. They're on. They're basically our main characters are indebted to the Whalen Yutani Corporation. Uh, our main character is a girl named Rain. She's trying to. She thinks she's put in enough hours to get out of her servitude to get out of her contract. And her and her brother, quote unquote, Andy, right. who we see very early on, is a in fact an android. He's a Whalen Utani android. He's yeah. uh he's on the Fritz though. Her father, uh, who had passed away, kind of found him in the trash pile, redid him, gave him a directive that says, "Do what's best for uh, Rain." Protect rain, do what's and tell best. dad jokes. Yeah, and tell bad, uh, yeah, tell bad dad jokes yeah. over and over and over again. Um, she's got kind of a, a, a group of friends. They have a plan to get off the planet. Like you said, they find uh, the uh, the space station up in the sky, uh, space station Romulus, Romulus and Remus, which mm -hmm. is a theme throughout the film. And they want those pods so they can get to uvula three or whatever it's called uh to see the sun because they're, the they're on this mining planet there is no sun there's nothing going on uh there's just there's a lot of uh humanity is uh it's kind of on the brink in a way at, yeah. least, at least in this outer territory there's a lot of sickness a lot of disease all these people's parents and sisters and siblings have kind of all died off from various lung diseases and, and diseases have taken over their little mining colony and they want uh they want better for themselves yeah, and they think they can get it by going up to Romulus, but uh, that that doesn't turn out to be that, that don't work too good. Yeah, for that them. doesn't turn out to be the case at all. Uh, what did you think of the cast here? I thought a pretty solid cast. Uh, my standout is the gentleman that played Andy. Andy's probably my favorite character in this film. I, I really like that guy. Another strong android for the Alien franchise. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
opposed to something we'll talk about in a minute that yeah. also involves an android. <laughs> right. But yeah, I like uh, I like Andy. I think the the girl that played Rain was good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we get kind of Rain. We get um, uh, kind of her friend who is uh, the. Uh, I guess they have a little romantic subplot, I guess you would say. They're kind of a little sort romance. Of, yeah. Kind of hinted at. They don't really go into it. They have another girlfriend who is, we learned early on is pregnant. And then we have another friend who's just like our dick, just that hates androids. And he's just like a... He's dad guy. He's like an antagonist. <laughs> uh, you know, he's just one of those that guys. Yeah. And then we have the pilot. I think her name was Navarro. And that's pretty yeah. much the tight kind of knit little cast. Small crew, uh, as long as along with Andy, that go up to to. Romulus, but yeah, I think it's no problem with anybody as no. far as cast goes. Mm-mm. All the performances were fine. Nothing, nothing in the performances like threw me off at all from any of those. Uh, the main cast, like I said, cinematography, the the practical effects were great. The special effects were great. There was no cringe CGI or anything like that that I saw. There's some the, old old school body horror brought back here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of again, you know, the HR Giger influence comes mm-hmm. out here. There's a lot of things that look like peepees and vaginas. You know, <laughs> right. as, as always, we yeah. talked about after the film, there's like at one point the uh, the xenomorph kind of at, in its second form when it goes from little penis with teeth to like full xenomorph. It kind of like puts itself into like a little squirt and vagina on the wall <laughs> that gets uh, hit with like a cattle prod thing. Right. Lots yeah. of good body horror. Lots yeah. of good stuff there. Again, the music is fine. All of it's fine. Everything was absolutely working for me. The early scenes with the face huggers from the trailer with the dudes getting mouth bu- uh, fucked by the face hugger. Mm-hmm. All that stuff was great. Everything was working. They get up to Romulus. Shit's not right when they get there. They see um, a few things that are weird. Namely, there's a big hole in the floor. There's also a half ripped in half android body on the floor that we'll talk about in just a second. Yes. Um, they go into the, uh, the, the 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 storage unit that has some some of that cryo fuel in it because they find the pods, but they don't have enough fuel to make it to the actual destination. They can only yeah. sleep about three years. They need to sleep about nine years. Yep. So they find the cryo fuel. It happens to be warehoused in uh, the place where they're keeping all the um, face huggers, face huggers yeah. cool and keeping them uh, below room temperature. So, so they stay frozen when they room that fuel that sets the face huggers free. And then pretty much it's on from there. Oh yeah. It's the alien, you know, which becomes the aliens, you know, which kind of becomes the alien three, you know, which kind of becomes the alien erection, uh, resurrection, not erection. <laughs> hey! not erection. I missed that. Sequel. Maybe the <laughs> alien erection, you know, uh, depending on how, much you really enjoy this film <laughs> the alien resurrection that you know uh and also prometheus and covenant sprinkled in which we'll talk about too uh but here everything is working everything's working great for me i'm like oh this is this is delivering so far everything i want it to and then they uh they think about uh who would know what's going on here and what the fuck's happening what these creatures are probably that android body on the ground the old science perhaps officer. we can reconnect him and uh just give just chat with him a little bit mm-hmm. And they do, and when they do plug him up, and I saw the silhouette, and I immediately knew. I was like, oh, fuck, let, don't, please don't do it. <laughs> and they did it. The science officer's name is Rook, but he is the exact type of model and has the exact same look of Ash from the original Alien. Uh, but in this case, it is a basically like someone... Uh, kind of cropped out a 2D picture of uh, Ash's face in right. MS Paint and pasted it on a 3D model, and it looks like absolute dog shit. It's bad. It, it is, is bad. terrible. It is one of the worst um, examples of this bullshit I've seen in a while. Talk what you want about Tarkin from Rogue One, Leia at the end of Rogue One, Luke Skywalker and the Mandalorian, like all this shit like that they've been done recently. I think this is probably the worst the worst one looking one, yeah. To me that took me out of it the most that I'm like there was I was like, this really looks bad. And that was the first gut punch. I'm like, why? Why, Todd? That decision I don't know. is baffling. Obviously, there's other Android models out there. There's a, a Michael Fassbender looking one, David. Yeah. There's one that looks like Lance Henriksen. There's ones that look like Andy. Right. There's others. And I'm not saying use any of those. I'm saying they can be different looking. They don't all have to look like Ash or anybody else we know. Uh, I wasn't aware. I was looking around all all the this, this weekend, Todd. I wasn't aware there was an actor shortage. 
actors. <laughs> I didn't know right. they were not able to hire new actors and put them in films. Um, and it just goes back to, I'll, I'll keep my rant going. What did you think about it? Because I got some more shit to say about this. I mean, obviously, I'm right there with you. I was I was invested in this wholeheartedly right up until that happened. And I'm like, oh. Because, I mean, you know, at some point, somebody's going to go into, like, the official Alien Wikipedia and be like, well, you know, uh, in this in these years uh, in the Alien uh, series, you know, the only science officers were mm-hmm. this two, type model. A white one and a black one. They all look <laughs> the <laughs> same. They look like Ash or look like Andy, apparently. Yeah, this particular model series, that uh, Ash and Rook, they, they all look just exactly alike. Right. You know, bullshit. Yeah. I think this was, this is definitely was a missed opportunity. You could have maybe casted like a big name maybe right here to have been that science officer android yeah i'm not saying you get some some huge name but you know maybe somebody could have you know carried a little bit more weight in that role but it just i mean it just completely just it was like you say it was a gut punch it kind of it kind of takes you out of it it's like because it looks so bad it looks so cringy (laughs) yeah i was talking to someone and i was like i would have been less taken back if it was some big name star that you associate with their them as an actor more than a character. Like if it was like Tom Hanks or if it was Tom yeah. Cruise <laughs> right. or if it was Morgan Freeman or right. if it was like literally anybody else um, that was a real person with a real human face that was in fact still alive, it would have been better. And I would have forgiven it a lot more. But yeah, why not hire or or do anything else? Why not hire a person why not hire a real actor? Yeah. And it goes back into the scumminess of Ian Holm is dead. He's <laughs> right. dead. <laughs> Let the dead rest. Right. They went to his estate. They paid him some money and good on them for taking the money. I probably yeah. would have too if somebody's like, hey, can we yeah. license your Uncle Todd's uh, face <laughs> for this dildo commercial? Sure. <laughs> Sure. Wow. Sure. Take it. Give me my a legacy is yeah. set. Yeah. Like, <laughs> give me some money and take his likeness. I don't blame them. I just think the whole thing is scummy. The whole thing of like, we 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 can't live and escape the past. We have to tie this back in so much that we have to take this dead actor's likeness and use AI to recreate his voice instead of just doing something new and have it be literally anybody that's living and breathing on the earth right now that could have just been a half of an Android body. And then it's like, well, Cody, it's not that bad. And I was thinking, well, maybe it's only this scene. He's in it for the whole thing. He's in it quite a bit. And even when he's on the little television monitor, it still don't look that much better. It still don't look that much better. It's distracting. And I don't understand from a filmmaking perspective how somebody that's so good with visuals and visual storytelling made that decision. And yeah. let that stay and thought that looked well enough and good enough to put on screen and let it be and live that long in so many scenes. I'll never understand. Yeah. For, I mean, it goes it, it goes beyond just being an Easter egg here. It goes to the point where it's like you're really trying to prop yourself up, up on what came before you. He's part A of little too much. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. <laughs> the film is literally the, it's a, it's the Alien franchise's greatest hits because it goes from Alien and then it then there's a point where it switches to aliens mm-hmm. then there's a point that it switches to alien three and resurrection and when i say greatest hits in this case i don't i think it's to the detriment more than anything because it just it doesn't stand on its own you feel like it's going to and like it live it feels like it started to live in the alien world and i was excited for something that just kind of lit wanted to go back and kind of live in the alien world mm-hmm. and just be in that and be some good body horror and some tense scenes and some good xenomorph stuff and that be about it just tell me a little bitty story in between alien and aliens yeah and leave it alone and let it be that but it has to be and it also has to connect itself back to now Prometheus and Covenant, which we'll talk about too, yeah. but like it's literally like we just again it's that member berry like blender bullshit where it's like let's pick out this, let's pick out this and like and I like Fede Alvarez as a director. I like I really enjoyed the the was it twenty thirteen Evil Dead that he did. That was amazing. Which yeah. lived in that world and had some callbacks, but it wasn't like fan service to this masturbatory level that this is. <laughs> 
because I, I'll, I'll skip around here. The next thing that took me out of it is for no reason during a, a tense scene where Rain and Andy are kind of going up this elevator shaft and there's like a, it's a, there's a zero G, no gravity element to it. Mm-hmm. There's a pulse rifle that's introduced from yeah. Aliens, of course. Right. Because it, the film definitely just on a dime switches from Alien to, to aliens. aliens. Yeah. And then uh, we get the pulse rifle. Andy gets a hold of it to save Rain and he's just standing over over a xenomorph and he's like get away from her and i'm like just leave it there that's enough for me to like okay i know what you're doing just 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 say the line get away from her and he even pauses and he pauses to to let the audience like sit up in their seat is Is he he gonna gonna do it is Is he he gonna gonna? (laughs) is he gonna they're just unzipping their pants at that point and then he's like you bitch This is that only existed as a fan service. It makes no sense in the context. Yeah, it makes no sense in the context of the film. It's only one of those scenes there that are just for fans, just for member berries, just for fan service, and it makes me sick. (laughs) Because it, it doesn't fit. There's good ways to do fan service, but this just felt like somebody took uh a nail and just hammered it into the part of the film. And it and it makes me just want to vomit. (laughs) <laughs> I thought about this after we left that night, and this just kept rolling around in my mind. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Deadpool and Wolverine. And, of course, that's a film that's loaded with Easter eggs. And it's eggs. built on that, too. It's built on that, but that's a type of movie that could carry that and pull it off. Mm-hmm. And remember, we actually said you can't do nothing like this, like in a Marvel movie proper, or something with a more serious tone, because people, you know, right. it's not going, it's going, not going to land. And right. bow and behold, it's not, it's an alien movie, but they still tried that stuff, and some of it, I mean, it went over like a lead fucking balloon. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a lot of. It's, this is no like in game Avengers symbol. This is yeah. no Cap picks up Mjolnir. This is like. Just there's a line that exists in this franchise. Where can we fucking just hammer this shit in somewhere that doesn't make any sense in the context? Yeah. Ripley was fighting the alien queen at the time. Yeah. A queen, which is predominantly looked at in that universe as female, female. a female xenomorph. She was again um going after Newt and to say, get away from her, you bitch, fit. This does not fit. It's does a random fit. drone. It's just hammered in. It's just a <laughs> random <laughs> drone that he's on top of, and just to just to yeah. fit in that line for no reason. And um, you know, too, I mentioned Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and some people may call me out on it because they're like, "Well, Cody, they do." I was thinking about it because Blade Runner twenty forty nine is probably it it it's if it's not, it's damn near close to in my like top five movies of all time. It's definitely top ten for me. Yeah, and they do. There is some fan service stuff. They bring back and they do a um, a CGI model of Sean Young um, and her character from the original Blade Runner. Right. They bring they bring her back and it like, but it it works better and it fits. And the lighting is very dimly lit. Or half of it's in shadow most of the time. Like it's done in the the classiest way that you could do that. Do I love that they brought back a model of Sean Young? Not necessarily, but the whole point is they bring him back this half-assed model version to show Deckard and him be like, that's not the person I know. That's not who I was in love with. Yeah. I forget her character's name. I don't know why I forget. I cannot remember her name to save my life, but that's not the, the woman, the, replicant that I was in love with. Yeah. And that's the whole point of it. It's like a half ass version of it. This is presented like this is supposed to be like full on. Remember this guy? Yeah, like from Alien yeah. 79. And I know we're Remember? spending a lot of time on this, but this is the thing that killed it for me. Like it re- these things are what killed it. It's it's the the stuff with Rook, it's the stuff with uh, that line delivery, it's the stuff that ties it into Prometheus at the end because it just again, we're just picking stuff and we're not we're too scared to do something semi-original we're, we're too reliant on the past and that's another trend that i hate with these these uh nostalgia franchises is that we're too scared to stand on our own here yeah that's the problem and it's like that part where they were uh, getting ready to head out and you know that guy hears that girl and they turn to go back down that hallway and it's like oh we've entered the aliens portion of our ride <laughs> yeah i mean because it's exactly you know that's people webbed up you know and it's a bunch of xenomorphs coming out it's it's the it was the aliens yeah portion of the movie. i mean it literally you could literally <laughs> pinpoint the scene where we transition from 1979 
alien horror, one xenomorph into multiple xenomorphs into, uh, again, like you said, glued to walls, mm-hmm. and we know when it's aliens. And then it transitions into the third act. It transitions into Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, with this hybrid bullshit, which, and also Prometheus and everything mixed in. And not to say that there's not some good stuff. Like I said, that opening facehugger scene is great. Mm-hmm. The the second scene with the facehuggers where they have to they make the room the little middle ground that the facehuggers are in room temperature to them and kind of now maybe expanded universe other films that I'm maybe not aware of right. or uh, some type of canon for the alien franchise I was never really aware that the facehuggers like hunted off of mostly sound and body heat thermal heat okay um, that's something that's specifically stated in this film which I'm okay with I like that idea they don't really have eyes what else are they going to do so right. sound and thermal imaging makes sense yep. and there's a little tense scene where you can't make a sound you need to walk through this room you need to keep your tension down you don't need to sweat do anything it's a good little tense mm-hmm. little scene I, even when it does turn into aliens and you have the scene where uh, she finally gets the pulse, they give her the pulse rifle because we got to do aliens and it has a little aim assist feature, which is like, okay, let's hand wave a little bit of that because mm. so she can just have perfect aim. Uh, and she starts obliterating a bunch of them in zero G and you get the acid blood scene everywhere. Like also, that was cool, a, yeah. also a good scene, also something different and mm. new. If you're going to turn it into aliens, at least it was something new and it was a good scene. But by then I'm just like, Dear God, <laughs> this is kind of cool what I'm seeing, but dear God, his face, it was so bad. Like, that's where I was at in the theater. I just right. couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, his face is so bad. His face is so bad. Why would they do this? Yeah. Like, oh, acid blood and zero G, that's kind of cool. God, why? <laughs> like, that's just where I was with it the whole time. Anything else that was cool would be presented to me. That's the way I kind of felt about it. But yeah, all that stuff is good. And I thought they were going to kind of use that to an effect of like, because they, they're kind of sealed off in that room with the alien zero G. There's like a little gate thing and they can't get through it. I thought they were going to somehow like position them to like use the blood to like kind of melt that gate, but that don't happen. I thought that's how they were going to like right. proceed through. Um, What else we got here, Todd? We've been talking about the bad stuff. Let's talk about some of the other stuff here that uh, may be bad and or good. Um. We talked about floating uh, acid blood scene. Um, one thing, too, I wanted to kind of point out, because I thought when we were just firmly an alien, so Navarro's the one that gets face-hugged. She's the first one that gets face-hugged. Mm-hmm. She gets impregnated. And uh, Fucked Up Face Rook tells them, you might be able to, they, they think about, well, can we freeze the tail and get it off of her? And Rook's like, yeah, it might work. And they freeze the tail and they get it off of her. And they're like, we don't know if it's we got it in time. Did is it too little, too late, or did we save her in time from being pregnated? And they do this thing where now I haven't been able to really go back and watch it, but I, I'm thinking the way it was looking and the way it was birthed when she does, because she in the trailer, she's kind of like showing that little portable X-ray of herself, mm-hmm. or you know something that kind of shows through her. Yep. You see that it bust, busts out of her chest, and it hatches. And I thought it looks a little like deformed. It looks different. It looks deformed like it's half-baked, like it didn't quite get it's finished. F- yeah, yeah, right. It didn't get f- to, to fully develop, mm-hmm. and so it was kind of forced out early, so it's kind of a little half-baked, looked a little weird. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, we're doing Alien, but it's a little deformed. It's a little weird. How's it going to look? How's it going to hunt them? Okay, oh, cool. That's cool. I'm on board. And then there's another scene where it kind of grows up a little bit, and I thought there was a point where it kind of, like, goes out of vent in the top of the shot and, like, kind of was dragging itself a little ways. Like, I don't know if I'm crazy about that, but, like, did, did you read it that way? Did you think it was deformed, or am I just crazy? You actually had to point that out to me because I didn't catch that part. Now, I the dragon it, part I didn't catch, but I did think when it popped out of it, it looked a little weird. Like, it maybe yeah, where they had frozen and didn't incubate long enough, and maybe it was kind of premature. Yeah. yeah. Like, I thought I saw it kind of drag itself through that vent or something weird about it. I could be wrong. People can fact check me if they paid attention. But then also, I'm kind of questioning my own theory because, like, it kind of lands on that grate above her and seemed to be on two feet and be fine mm-hmm. so like i don't know but i, I thought that idea if that's kind of what they were going for would have been really interesting to do yeah. that but um that's all out the window because that one is completely lost in the shuffle because there's like 1600 more of them right coming down hallways like so the one we started with i don't know that there's not really any particular resolution to that one i think we see it again in one shot because isn't there one that's kind of like sparking electricity or something? Because yeah, wasn't that the one right. he hit? 
I assume that's he's he hit it with the cattle prod, the prod and it yeah. still got some kind of spark and electricity. But like the cool idea and that one particularly just goes away. There's no like solo hunt like the original Alien because that one kind of goes away through half the, the 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 picture, and then there's like sixteen hundred more of them to come <laughs> right come uh, around and uh, and do that. Um, and we were talking after the film. It's definitely they find the original Alien. From Alien, the original Xenomorph that was chasing Ripley and the Nostromo crew is what they find, and it's kind of crystallized, fossilized, space doo doo rock form. <laughs> they cut it open, they take it aboard, they try to study it. Uh, we see at one point when they uh, when they pick it up, we see some remnants of the Nostromo. This is where I was telling you, I was like, I kind of feel like this is, should be like a this is like a um, Rise of Skywalker Death Star situation. Like I feel like the Nostromo should have been Adams. Because, like, you see it at the end of Alien, it blows up, like, four separate times <laughs> right. in this big nuclear explosion, just like the, the Death Star did, the Death Star number two. How was there any remnants of the Nostromo left? But there's a perfect, perfectly deserved, preserved OMO panel. Right, Just right. says OMO mm -hmm. um, in space. That was one question I had. Uh, I don't know how that, how any of that's left. Um, there's another part of it here where they present, so... Uh, Rook's body was laying there. They find him next to the hole, and it looked like acid blood had bled through and crashed, you know, kind of bled mm -hmm. through the, the different sections of the, the space station. And he points out the original alien just, like, hanging in the ceiling where they had killed it, and you can kind of see the little spike it's got in its back from Ripley shooting it with the, the hook, uh, the grapple hook and stuff for the alien. But someone killed it. My question is, who killed it, Todd? Uh, you put me on the spot. I have no idea. <laughs> this is something else I didn't. I didn't quite because it's dead, mm -hmm. and Rook is the only person that other person that's interactable with in this whole story. She there's a point where somebody I don't know if it's Rain or somebody else goes into like a little portion of the ship where it seems like there are some bodies, and I don't know if they were tore up. Or, because one of them had no back of the head. The back of his head was either ripped out or blown out. Like, I thought he may have killed himself. Because, like, I'm questioning him, like, where did the person or persons that killed that alien go? Did they just get, because there was nothing else presumably moving on the ship other than that particular xenomorph, right? Right. Everything else, until we get our main characters interacting with the space station, stayed intact. All the face huggers were there, I guess. Or were there's other ones free? Were those other xenomorphs also free? I mean, you got you got to figure, don't you? That not only were those face huggers there, but they were froze. But there was a whole other portion of the ship where all those other xenomorphs were already were there. already f were already running around and free. That didn't show up even when that bunch of people first showed up on the ship, turning it back on, making all that racket. <laughs> yeah, I guess they were somehow sealed off yeah. in a, that specific portion of the ship. I guess mm -hmm. somebody had sealed them. So, like, all this is, like, I guess those or that person killed themselves, whoever killed the original, like, the original alien. I guess that person either got killed or killed themselves at some point because there is that whole other portion of the ship that's locked off with xenomorphs. But then I was thinking about it, too. I asked you that night when we were leaving. I was like, where did those original face huggers, face -huggers come, from. come from? And I don't – and maybe I'm thinking too hard about it because, like – they found the original alien in its xenomorph form and its doo-doo crystal, and they brought it back. But where did they get the 400 other face huggers from? Right. And which would have had to have been in egg form because that's how we see that they're hatched is in egg form because once they impregnate something, they die. So, like, where, was, where did they get those eggs, Todd? Um, what happens, uh, tell us about the, the black goo and, uh, Robert England. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Rook actually divulges, uh, some exposition about how they've used the, uh, xenomorphs to kind of come up with this kind of, I forget what he calls it in the movie. He, he, they reverse engineered basically some the, kind of something that's supposed to be able to, they reverse engineered out of the xenomorph, the black goo that originally created them. Ah, yes. From that's Prometheus. It. <laughs> from Prometheus, because in Prometheus, the engineers basically they drank the black goo. He and drank the black humanity. goo and jumped into a river and eventually created humanity. That's, and yeah. David uses that black goo eventually to, 
Um, fuck around with the engineer. Well, impregnate Shaw, then it fucks around with the engineer, then they it becomes something, and then it involves an alien covenant, blah, 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 until the xenomorph you know today. But basically, they took a xenomorph and they reverse engineered it back to black goo. Right, because he's talking about how, you know, human humanity is not making it out here. They're not really made to be. Everybody's in. got tuberculosis. <laughs> Everybody's dying. Right. You know, it's, it's not working. So they've kind of re, re-engineered this stuff to kind of be like have regenerative properties for humans, kind of, you know, help them kind of. The next stage of human next, evolution. Yeah, next stage of human evolution. You're the X-Men. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and the next stage of human evolution. I know I told you to say it, but I'm going to say it because it's a good line. Because <laughs> I just thought of it. The next stage of human evolution looks like Robert England with a screwdriver pussy. <laughs> Oh, I'll be it, <laughs> I'll be back when I can. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> at one point, Isabella Merced's character, she's attacked by the the the, the deformed xenomorph for right. one of them. Right. And she's kind of critically injured, but she's not been impregnated at all. They find her. She's been taken, but she wasn't impregnated. She was glued to the wall, but she was waiting for a face hugger to get off its fifteen minute break and come stick its dick down her throat. <laughs> so she she wasn't she wasn't impregnated yet. Right. And uh, they've already got the vials of black goo because Ash is like not Ash Rook. Rook. Sorry, he has the same fucked up two D face. <laughs> Uh, they Rook says, take the black goo vials, take them with you. If you take them, I will unlock the blah, 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 let you get back to your ship, and I'll autopilot you out of here. Right. You know, do it for the company, basically. Yeah. And so they, um, he tells them the exposition you just gave us, and they debate whether or not to give the pregnant girl, Isabella Merced, uh, a dose of the a vial of that black goo because that could potentially save her life. We see on that screen though, it shows a little test on a on a rat where it's like it went from like being squashed to like back to life. Yeah. But then it just blows up. Horribly goes horribly wrong. Like someone put it in a microwave. Right. And you don't they don't tell her that part. So she decides on her own once she kind of gets away. Um. They, and Rain tells her to save herself, kind of thing. She's gonna go back for Andy. Mm-hmm. Um. She decides to give herself a shot of it. So the third act of the film, she births this which is a good scene good body horror stuff yeah, yeah. she births this um like little human baby pod it's like a little little pea pod a little pod yeah and it it kind of bursts out and it and it quickly grows from a little you can kind of see inside it's got a little it's got an alien outer shell but a little human baby inside mm-hmm. with that same kind of engineer prometheus kind of skin tone right and it quickly grows into a nine foot tall uh xenomorph human hybrid with an engineer face and a little like vagina thing that looks like it takes a Phillips head screwdriver. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like this slot for a Phillips head screwdriver. It's got a screwdriver puss. And Todd remarked, just because it's kind of fucked up in the back and it's got this weird look and he looked like Robert England. It looked like Robert England post V, but right before he took over the role of Freddy Krueger. Yeah, Todd was very specific about that. I was specific that. about my Robert England what, year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what year Robert England? Post V, <laughs> pre-Freddy. Pre-Freddy. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like a Robert England with a Phillips head screwdriver <laughs> that's the best way I can explain it. And I'm going to try to find some screenshots of the goddamn thing. But it looked cool. It was cool. I thing. don't mind it. Like, I don't mind it a bit. Uh-huh. I Overtly, it kind of sucks to me that it's connected to Prometheus and Covenant because to me, um, when I look at the Alien franchise, Alien began in 1979 and ended after in 1986. Yeah. I, I mean, don't really care much. about three. I don't care about Resurrection, and I don't care about this God complex stuff Ridley Scott was trying to do in the original and Prometheus and um, um, Covenant. Covenant. I don't really care about any of that. I don't care about Alien vs. Predator or any of that bullshit. Like, to me, there's really only two movies, and I was hoping this would just live right in there, and I would consider it, there's three movies. I was hoping by the end of this I would consider there's three movies in the Alien franchise now. Right. One that bridges the two, but no, it's still just two movies. <laughs> still two movies. Two movies. There's still two movies I consider as canon. Everything else I, I don't give a shit about because I think... This franchise has all because of some like stuff in Prometheus and all this. I think it is starting to to suffer so much from the more you know about it, the less scary it is. Yeah, you know, just like Darth Vader, just like all this stuff I talk about before. The more you know about things, the, the less, Joker. <laughs> yeah, the less scarier they yeah. become, and th- this franchise has started to suffer that for quite a few years now. But this just kind of adds to it. But I, I did not hate the third act. No, no, I did not. I thought it was weird. I thought it was different. And Alien, the franchise does have this, you know, it's kind of fulfilling the Alien 3 stuff with this like hybrid 
xenomorph human Ripley hybrid all this kind of right. stuff it, it that's where we go we we stop alien stops dead in its tracks and we get into alien 3 and resurrection is the third act of this film yeah and then it kind of it's like alien 3 resurrection mixed with alien because it's just one girl versus a monster and she's like doing her little Ripley suit up scene. You know, she, she suits in, up. She yeah. gets in. She gets in a, a suit as well. And like you know, she ends up blowing it out into space because that's about the only way you can kill these things. <laughs> and then they don't even die in space because they can they can live in space. Fossilize. Apparently. But yeah, she kind of <laughs> like uh, gets it um, and dumps it out through like the the cargo bed of the the ship. And it's a great scene. And there's a there's a setup before where Romulus ends up crashing into like the rings of that planet. Uh, her ship almost crashes into the rings yeah. of that planet. All fantastic yeah. looking, all great. But there's just that stuff in the middle and those gut punches that I cannot cannot abide. Cannot by. abide it, Todd. I just I um I don't know. I just can't abide it. Another question I had: Does Rook? I assume he did. But does Rook know? Did Rook know that 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 black goo didn't work as intended, and he was just like fuck it anyway. Or did he just not know? Did he not know? I assume he's kind of like David and just wants to see what happens. I would think he knew, yeah. Because David's just like, fuck it, let's see what happens. Let's see what I can do. So I assume he knew the black goo didn't work. That model series of science officer fucking sucks. (laughs) (laughs) From David, whatever model from David down to like Bishop slash Andy, all of them fucking suck. Suck. (laughs) Yeah. um, Yeah, there's just a lot of like kind of lingering questions. Is there anything that I missed that I didn't that I didn't talk about that you want to kind of highlight as good or bad here, Todd? There was a couple of things I actually saw on a video that I didn't really think about at the time, but how did this group of, you know, youngsters that's pretty much, you know... Destitute. Con- destitute. Have a ship. Have a ship. I think somebody <laughs> mentioned it was like one of them's uncles or something, mm-hmm. something like that. I think. And I could be wrong, but I also thought about that. But that was a one, that's one of the things I could suspend my disbelief because we have yeah. to have some type of story. Yeah, that's just my those, those things I can be like, oh, okay, they've... Yeah. One of them inherited a the ship. They're, all these, their parents died. Maybe the parents had a yeah, ship. Yeah, that's just minor stuff, though. What else did they say? Uh, how, <laughs> how does even if that didn't belong to that particular mining company, you know, how do they not know that there's a friggin' massive space station right above them getting ready to crash into them? Yeah, <laughs> or crash into the rings around. Yeah, yeah, how does only these like teenagers yeah. know and pick up a signal and a beacon? Like, how does the Wayland Utani Corporation not know where they have a settlement there? How do they not have something? Uh, tracking those beacons around there. How do you lose that space station with all that potential precious cargo still on it? Anyway, IV, those space huggers. Where was it last reported? Anyway, yeah. what, how? What, it's last report. It was in this area. Did they send anybody to look for it? No. It's one of them things where the more you think about it, I it's know. like you get more questions than you do answers. I know. And like again, there's levels to my suspension of disbelief, but when you ask me to have to sit here and watch you like resurrect two D E and home and paste him <laughs> on a three D body, I can't do it. Um if 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 this movie was um if it looked and everything like it was and it was just um just the alien from the first movie stalking them again, would it have been better to you? If Rook was a, a normal person, like a, like a human actor that was alive, and it was the original Alien from number one, would it have been a better movie to you? I, I, I think if we had played this out where it's, everything starts like it did, we get up there, everything's still like till we get to Rook, and that's a different actor. It's not this you know awful callback, right? And we still have this. Uh, I, th- I think what we a premature uh, xenomorph birth, and that thing actually turns out to be a little bit. You know, off, it's not right. It ain't cooked enough, you mm-hmm. know. And they, you know, you don't quite know what it's capable of. Maybe it's doing different things because it's not right. You yeah. Know? I think it would have played out a lot better for me. I think that is a great premise to yeah. set it and differentiate it enough to live in the alien world and to to pay homage to the type of film Alien was would have been enough fan service to me for this film is just to be to live in the alien world, the world of alien 1979 with, and have the premise of like this. We found the original. Maybe we did find an egg or two. Maybe we did go back to LV 426 or something, or maybe there's somehow that somehow somebody got infected. Somebody got impregnated again and it was deformed and we're being hunted by, uh, this thing that's not quite right. That's the perfect organism has was not able to achieve perfection. It's like imperfect cell. It's imperfect xenomorph. 
Right. Right. And like, so let's see what that's about. Yeah. I think that would have been a good. That premise. was a fun gray area to play around in. I, I think that would have been enough to carry this film mm-hmm. with a, and um, not have to go back in to ape off of every single alien film that has come before it, tie it to Prometheus and Covenant, and just crush it under the weight of nostalgia and member berries and bullshit. Uh, there's a lot visually to like about this yeah. film. There's a lot, but like when it comes to, I always put myself in the position if I was making this and directing this film, um, the choices I would make. And when I was presented with what to do with Rook, if that was the story I was telling, mm-hmm. I cast any human that was alive. <laughs> that's all I do. Yeah. And that's all I do. And it would make the film about probably. Probably about 50% better, honestly. And some people will like drag me over the rocks for saying it's just because of that or that I'm like hating on it. But it's all, it's, it's an accumulation of factors. It just, it doesn't live, um, it, it, it doesn't, it's not, it's set within the world, but it, it doesn't live on its own within the world. It's mm-hmm. set within the world and it borrows so much from everything else that's already been done before. It's yeah. not too much. It's honestly. too. It's too much. It's not. It's not uh, just. It's not just enough to be of the world. It's got to be everything we've seen already in the world. And let's figure out how to make Act One Alien, Act Two Aliens, Act Three Alien, Three Act. You know, and all this and Act Four like some kind of weird Prometheus thing. Like it's it has to like do all that instead of just right. making a uh, original story that lives within that world and the technology and the look and the grittiness and all that kind of stuff. So for that reason, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Todd, review time. Okay. Uh, Todd, give us your review score and final thoughts for Alien Romulus. Uh, even though we've seen here and pretty much body punched this thing to death, I, I do think that Alien Romulus at times is an amazing film. Uh, there is some incredible set design for not just a sci-fi film, but a film in general. Uh, there's some amazing set work here, set pieces, visually, uh, music. The cast is top-notch. They're great. Uh, there's some amazing scenes in this film. Unfortunately, what drag, drags it down for me is just it's a little bit too much of relying on things that have came before it. There's too much of it propping itself up on past sequels. I think that Alien Romulus really never hit the ground and ran like I kind of hoped it would. If you're thinking of this as not in between Alien but and Aliens, but as just another Alien sequel, I would say it's the third best. There's Alien, there's Aliens, and I would probably put Alien Romulus as my third Alien film that I would enjoy the most. Right. I feel like it's a seven for me. I think it's still a good film, but it's a very flawed film. Right. Um, again, I mentioned, I think this is, um, there's not really anything else that I know this year that I'm like really looking forward to. And this really kind of come out of nowhere when the trailer hit, cause I had no heat for, it, and then there's teaser mm-hmm. trailers hit and I'm like, Oh, this could be, I saw it was directing it. I saw the trailers. I'm like, this could really be something. Mm-hmm. And I went from zero to kind of a hundred, and it became probably my besides like Deadpool and Wolverine, probably like my most anticipated this year. And it will end up being probably the most disappointing film of 2024 for me. Um, it's very flawed. It's again, it's a visual masterpiece in terms of visual filmmaking and storytelling. You cannot fault this film there from the atmosphere, the mood it creates, yep. how it's able to recreate the original 1979 alien and make you feel like you're back in that world. Um, is all fantastic. And the music and the cast and all those performances are fine. It really just comes down to decision-making and poor decision-making and um, not being able to escape the past yeah and all these nostalgia franchises cannot seem to escape the past and do anything that's within that world but original to the world yeah. or just tell a story without having to, to to tie it back or to uh do all this member berry stuff and put it all into the member berry blender and um you know it's really hard to balance a, 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 and it does it does like you said have some standout scenes and some really good scenes. And it probably does go down in like, if I, if I accept that they're more than two alien films, <laughs> uh, probably third or fourth best in the franchise. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's hard to balance like how good it looks and how good parts of it is versus how I, how much I dislike other parts of it. Right. Like, you know, we don't do like middle ground. We don't do like half scores and like break it down and say it's an eight for these. Like if it, if I was just like on visuals, it's like a nine. Yeah. It's like a nine. But like, how do, how do I compare, how much does the visuals 
like how much does that rate it and how much does it take off for what I don't like about it. Right. So I'm going to sit with it at the end of the day, I'm going to give it a six. Okay. I'm going to say it's decent. I think there are some people that will enjoy this and I can see there's, there's some people that will firmly plan it and say, it's probably the third best alien film of all time. And like say that it's approaching levels of the other two. Um, I can see people saying that. Mm -hmm. I think that is complete, complete garbage. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But I understand. I can understand and see why some people would love this film. It's just not for me. I got you. Do I feel like I would go back and watch this? Probably. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Like, I might give it another watch one day, but, like, I I really, right now, don't even want to associate with it. It's 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 hurt me in Get ways out of my family cookout. It, I'm, I'm done it hurt with you. me in ways <laughs> that I didn't think I could be hurt anymore, Todd. Wow, these are like it's like Man of Steel days, you know. Oh, this is a big hurt, you, you know. Like it just it could have been so much more, and I hope people enjoy it and, and stuff. But like it's hard for me to say, like you know, it's 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 a lot of things. It, it's um. There's so much done right, and but so much done wrong. It's hard for me to like know how to feel about it and tell people like I want to like I want people that make good films and good looking films and like good filmmakers like be successful with their projects. But I'm also like this is kind of supporting this kind of also is all the things I hate about current Hollywood and these nostalgia franchises like digging up dead actors and using <laughs> right. using their likenesses and the scummy, you know, scummy ways of doing that and like AI doing their voice and also like right. not making original stories and not like creating things that are that are new and exciting in a universe like it, it's kind of almost all the bad stuff I hate about current Hollywood but so I don't know make your own decisions about it like yeah. if you if you trust us on our opinions you know maybe wait for it to come out home video wise but i mean i think if you're an alien fan you'll it's kind of required viewing just to kind of make up your mind yourself yeah so but for me i i, I really don't care for it so it gets a six okay for me at the end of the day todd uh anything else i'm good boss all right any my other- head's hurting i'm good <laughs> Uh, All right, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us on social media. Tal Capes will return. Till next time, bye, guys. Later, guys.